All right, so this is laboratory number one, the anaerobic power lab, and also looking at the anticipatory response to exertion. So before we really get into what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to talk about what we're actually looking at. So there's the ATP production pathways, and there's three of these pathways. Um, and during physical activity, ATP is simultaneously produced from all three energy systems. Now, that's an important thing to know, uh, and it'll definitely come up throughout the semester. So you have to know that ATP is always produced from the three different energy systems at the same time. There's never a situation where one is completely turned off and the other two are working or anything like that. So, uh, for example, if I was going to run a marathon, uh, I would be mostly using the oxidative phosphorylation pathway. Right? I'm probably getting 99% of my energy from that pathway. But uh, the ATP PCR pathway and the glycolysis pathway are still working. Okay, so it just comes down to what percentage each energy system contributes, but they're always working at all times. So the three pathways uh, I just mentioned, there's ATP, PCR, glycolysis, and oxidative phosphorylation. And we can look at all three of those in a little bit more detail. So you can see that ATP, PCR only gets you one ATP, but it's a very simple reaction. So you do this to get quick energy, usually uh, in a time frame of 0 to 10 seconds. Anything that lasts that long, you're going to use this system primarily. All right, so it's just taking phosphocreatine and ADP and turning it into ATP and creatine. Okay, and this is done by creatine kinase, which is an enzyme. Uh, and you can tell it's an enzyme because it ends in ASE. So anything you see that ends in ASE uh, is an enzyme and it has some function like this. Uh, and then there's glycolysis that gets you two ATPs. We can see that that is a little bit more of an elaborate process. Uh, and you have to actually donate two ATPs to get four ATPs out. All right, so you get four ATPs out, but you had to donate two uh, to the sugar molecule. So it's really a net of two ATPs, right? Four minus two equals two. So you get uh, two ATPs in glycolysis. Uh, now, ATP, PCR, and glycolysis are the anaerobic processes. The aerobic process uh, that we get the most energy from, or the most efficient, is oxidative phosphorylation. And you get 32 ATPs. And we can see that we start off with glycolysis, uh, and we get the substrates that come out of glycolysis go right into the Krebs cycle, or the citric acid cycle, uh, or the TCA cycle. It has a lot of different names, but it's a cycle that you see on the bottom middle of your screen. Uh, and then well, we can go to the electron transport chain, right? And that's where we get uh, most of our ATP uh, with the electrons and the hydrogen ions uh, shooting across using an enzyme called ATP synthase. Okay, and again, uh, ASC at the end of that, so it is an enzyme, has a function, uh, and its job is to make ATP. We get 32 ATPs out of this process, okay? Uh, and again, oxidative phosphorylation needs oxygen, uh, so that's a good way to remember it. Uh, and it's an aerobic process. Glycolysis, ATP, uh, PCR are anaerobic processes. Okay, so when we actually do the Wingate test, which is the test that we're going to do for lab number one for anaerobic power, there's two things that we need to consider. One, the test must be maximal. Okay, so it's going as hard as you can for 30 seconds on one of these cyclergometer bikes that we have. Uh, in the lab. And then the duration of the test for a, a maximal capacity test needs to be, the time needs to be sufficient for uh, what you're trying to test. Right, so if we were going to test an anaerobic system, well, our test should be pretty short. The general rule is any test that lasts less than two minutes, you're mostly looking at an anaerobic process. Uh, if a test lasts longer than two minutes, now you're looking at more of an aerobic process. All right, so our test is only 30 seconds, uh, and like I said before, ATP PR, uh, PCR is usually just uh, in the 0 to 10 second range, and then after that, we're going to be using our glycolysis system, but 30 seconds is a good way to test our anaerobic systems. And uh, for the Wingate test, so like I said, it's 30 seconds of maximal cycling, and the resistance is going to be 7.5% of your body weight. So I weigh uh, 80 kilograms, and it's important to use uh, kilograms. Right, and you can convert from pounds to kilograms by uh, taking how much you weigh in pounds and dividing it by 2.2. Okay, so I've already done that. 
so I know I weigh 80 kilograms, and I multiply that by 7.5%. Okay, so 7.5% of 80 kilograms is 6. So 6 kilograms, that's the resistance that I'm going to use on the cycle ergometer. Okay, so now uh, we can look at this equation for power, which you might recognize if you've taken a physics class. So it's force times distance divided by time. Uh, so like I said before, we know our force based on our body weight, and that's going to be the resistance of the bike. So for me, it would be 6 kilograms that I would have to pedal against. Uh, and then the distance is something uh, we know based on the circumference of the flywheel you know, in the bike, uh, multiplied by the number of rotations. So on the Monarch ergometer, which is the, the bikes that we're going to use in this lab, uh, every time you rotate the flywheel of the bike, it's six meters. Okay, so you take the number of rotations that you do as you go through the 30-second uh, test. Uh, you multiply that by six meters, and that's the the distance that you've gone. Okay, so now we know distance, we know our force, and then time is easily measured. We all we need is a stopwatch. Okay, so now we can use the equations you see at the bottom of the screen. Uh, resistance times 6 uh, times the number of rotations divided by time. Okay, so that's our power equation. Uh, you need to know that. Uh, we're going to use it a few different times, and you might see it on a quiz, uh, or you definitely have to use it in your lab report. So uh, know this equation. All right, so like I said, there's a couple of ways to, to measure power or different things to look at. So there's the peak anaerobic power which is kind of just testing our ATP PCR cycle. This is the peak number of revolutions during any five second uh, interval. Okay, so we're going to pedal for 30 seconds and we're going to divide that 30 seconds into uh, six five second intervals. Okay, so and you can see in the sample data on the handout that they've collected data uh, for six five second intervals. You can see that their first interval, I think it's, it's about nine revolutions in the first five seconds and then the person fatigues, and by the last uh, five second interval, they only get three revolutions. Okay, so we're going to divide our 30 second uh, wind gate test into five second intervals. And the peak number of revolutions is our peak anaerobic, it gets us our, our peak anaerobic power. So again, the sample handout, I think this comes in the first five seconds, as we would expect, because we're using the ATP PCR cycle. So we get, uh, so we get nine revolutions. So we plug that into our equation, we do 9 times 6, uh, multiplied by our resistance, which is based on our body weight, like we said before, and then we divide by 5 seconds. Okay, So that's peak anaerobic power. Now, our mean anaerobic power is just looking at the total number of revolutions, so mean as in you know, average. So it's kind of like taking the average power of the whole 30 second test. All right, So we have to consider total revolutions. Again, times 6 meters per revolution, times our distance, and then we divide it by 30 seconds, right? So we're looking at the whole 30 second interval. All right? So that's peak anaerobic power and mean anaerobic power. All right? And you have to know these equations and use these equations uh, for your lab report. All right? Uh, another thing that we can look at is the anticipatory response. So in preparation for exercise, you get this fight or flight response. And it's definitely something maybe we've experienced before when you're about to compete uh, in some competition. You, you can kind of feel it. Uh, your heart rate goes up, uh, and you're also you can get an increase in contractility of your heart. So you, the heart rate will go faster and they'll be stronger. So you'll get an increase in heart rate and an increase in blood pressure. This is based on uh, hormones and neural reactions, but it's uh, mostly epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are two hormones that uh, can interact with cardiac muscle and increase the contractility. Okay, So the increase of contractility of your heart gets you an increase in heart rate, an increase in blood pressure. And then you also get a redistribution of blood flow. So you get an increased blood flow to our muscles in preparation for this exercise. So uh, as we anticipate this exercise, we get a fight or flight response. 